those songs. They're all really good. That is from Smashing Live, it's called. An album that came out in 2003. Uh, but anyway, I guess we will get started. It's 7.02 on my clock. So, welcome to uh, an intro to Wii Game Modding. My name is Dan Salvato, better known in the Smash community as Internet Explorer. Um, and I have done a lot of work in Smash games, and I'm probably going to do some in Sonic Adventure 2 after a while. Um, and so I was hoping I could share my knowledge with you guys, um, and hopefully encourage you to get started in this stuff. Or if you're just watching because you find it interesting, then that's great too. So first of all, how to participate in chat. Um, you can say, of course, anything at any time, but I can't guarantee that I'll be uh, constantly listening or uh, reading your chats. But if you have questions, then I would like for you to prefix with uh, slash me, because uh, that colors your, your text uh, on Twitch, and it makes it easier to spot for me. Um, you can ask any sorts of questions, just general to Wii Modding, or if I'm doing something in particular and you have a question about it, then you can go ahead and ask that. I'll do my best to pause pretty frequently and take a look at your questions to make sure I don't lose anybody. Um, and overall, I'm going to try to go at like a, a relatively slow pace. So for those of you who have some experience in either computer science or this field in particular, um, the, uh, I'm sorry if you know I start off with things that you might already know. But I'd really like to include everybody, so that's what I'll be doing. So who am I? I'm some guy, uh, just like all of you, pretty much. Um, I am attending my third year in college right now. I'm at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Um, and I've been around in the Smash community for a couple of years now, and I've been working on uh, Melee and Brawl or Project M for maybe a year. Uh, my two running projects are Project M, which, well, I don't head the project, but I'm part of the team. Um, and Project M, if you don't know already, is a mod of Brawl, and it focuses on uh, taking the game and making it essentially a lot more fun and more fast-paced, um, geared towards competitive play with an engine inspired by Melee. So it's basically, you know, what an actual sequel to Melee would be like if um, it was made by, you know, developers who uh, care about community feedback and know how to balance a game. Um, some stuff I've done for Project M is I wrote a code um, that replaces the handicap feature with stock control, so you were able to individually set character stocks, um, as well as a crew mode, which um, for competitive crew battles, or fun crew battles of course, it automatically remembers your stock uh, that you ended last match with, and when you start the next match, then you start with that amount of stock. Um, I also wrote a code that when the game sits idle for three minutes, the audio fades down, and this is very useful for fests and tournaments, uh, when you have a whole bunch of setups going and maybe some of them aren't being played and so you'll hear like the, the menu music blaring around um, and so this uh, helps keep the sound levels under control a little bit and finally the, the last uh, major code that I wrote was uh, stage striking and although this was a collaboration with a couple of the other team members who actually worked with the stage select screen itself um, uh, I essentially did it did most of the work on the code where you can highlight a stage on the stage select screen and push X and it strikes that stage and it's a very useful tournament feature because the way that people start uh, tournament matches is they strike down stages until they decide upon one on which they want to play. So that's most of the work that I've done in Project M so far well that you've seen. I work on a couple of other things as well that you'll hopefully be seeing in the coming months. Uh, my other project is uh, what's known as Super Smash Bros. Melee Online at SSBMO.com. And uh, this project, it aims to bring fast and reliable online play to Super Smash Bros. Melee. Um, so you'll be able to install it and rip a copy of Melee onto your PC. It's going to be a PC game. Um, and you'll essentially be able to launch it up... Um, and you'll be able to join a chat room and find players to play with and very quickly uh, go through matches uh, with seamless online play and synchronization with um, a whole bunch of brand new features as well that help for both competitive and uh, casual fun. 
such as very easy texture modding, you know, new character and stage select screens, and a ton of customization that you'll really like. Um, some work I've done for Melee is uh, I just threw a few things on here, but I wrote a code for widescreen support, which works really nicely for PC, and you can even use it on console as well if you're playing on a widescreen TV. Um, I wrote a code that, that helps for training, where you can hit down on the D-pad to reset all the character's damage, um, and we'll be doing something kind of similar to that um, in this session as well. Um, I wrote another code where your character flashes when you L-cancel successfully, and this helps uh, people who are training competitively. It gives more of a visual cue to see when you L-cancel. Um, uh, same with uh, turning white during a shield stun. If you're putting on shield pressure on your opponent and you want a better visual cue of how much pressure you're putting on, then that's very useful. So anyway, uh, in this session, um, I'll be covering a number of things. Uh, the first thing is how to use Dolphin's debug features. Uh, Dolphin is a GameCube and Wii emulator uh, available for PC, Mac, and Linux, uh, and that's what we'll be using for this. I'll also go over some basic processor stuff, um, what a processor is and does. Um, in, in the case of GameCube and Wii, it's a power PC processor but what we will be learning is more or less applicable to other systems as well. Um, I'll also be going over hexadecimal and game memory and how variables and things like that are stored. Um, we'll be using Dolphin's cheat search feature to find uh, memory addresses that interest us, so we'll be able to find, for instance, the memory address that holds like a character's stock account or something like that, um, and we'll be able to ma manipulate it. I'll also be going over the basics of breakpoints, which essentially allows you to set a point at which you want the code to stop executing, and so you can um, go step by step through the game's code and see exactly what stuff does. Um, and then we're going to write some very basic codes that just modify some memory addresses, and we'll also write a couple of more advanced codes that actually uh, inject into the game code and modify it. And here are some things I will not be covering, and I apologize I've had a time uh, if you were expecting these things and I'm disappointing you. Um, but I will not be writing homebrew applications. In fact, I don't know how to write homebrew applications. <laughs> um, I could probably look into it, and you could too if you have programming experience, because there are lots of tools available for doing so. You could probably start at webrew.org for that. Um, I also won't be modifying game files. Um, Project M, as well as a, a bunch of other mods, um, largely they go into the game's files and they you know, make modifications to them if they want to add stuff into the game or make small changes to the way things look or behave. Um, I won't be doing that, mainly because I can show you how to do it for you know, a, a game like Brawl, but since all game files are different, all game engines are different, it's not really applicable uh, to anything else. And so I want to keep this general. Um, and focus on my particular field of expertise, which is uh, writing writing codes for these games, rather than just modifying their files. Uh, I will also not be showing you how to mod or hack your Wii, but you can look up Mod Me if you want to figure out how to do that. That's the program I recommend that makes it very easy if you want to uh, put the homebrew channel on your Wii and mess around with some homebrew apps. I also will not be showing you secret Project M stuff. <laughs> things that we are working on or just haven't revealed yet. Um, in fact, you actually won't be seeing any of Project M in this session, mainly because I don't have the files on this computer. I'm not at my main computer right now, um, but also it's not necessary for what I will be teaching. And the last thing is, um, I won't be showing you USB Gecko, which is a tool that essentially allows you to plug your Wii into your PC and modify it directly. It's kind of like the alternative hacking and debugging tool for what I'm doing, but I prefer using Dolphin, and it's much easier for me to show you guys and set up, and the USB Gecko is very, very hard to find nowadays, uh, so I would encourage other people to use Dolphin as well. These are the tools that I use. It's really not that much. Uh, I use the Dolphin emulator, uh, which you can find at dolphinemu.org. Um, I use Notepad++ which is a great full-featured text editor, um, which you can find at, you know, again, that website. And the last tool I use is called ASM Weird, 
and that will allow us to write uh, assembly code and it converts it into a format that uh, like the GameCube and Wii understand basically. Uh, and the last thing is uh, it's it's useful I guess to have a GameCube to USB adapter but they're pretty hard to find and it's honestly not necessary any USB controller will work uh, or you can even just map keys to your keyboard which I do oftentimes unless I'm working on something complex that is useful to have a controller for so the first thing is uh, enabling debug in Dolphin it's very easy um, you can just take any Dolphin program, though I do recommend compiling Dolphin yourself. Uh, I actually won't be covering that, but you're able to find like tutorials online for doing so. But you essentially just need to create a shortcut to the Dolphin executable, and at the end of it, you right here, you just add the slash D flag. And then when you start up Dolphin with that shortcut, it'll start Dolphin in debug mode. Uh, and that brings us to our first or our zeroth demo of just kind of going over Dolphin's debug features. So let's see here hi guys this is me um, I have dolphin loaded up here um, in debug mode and basically well let me start up a game I guess I'll start up uh, melee so let me get melee loaded up uh, this is what dolphins debug mode looks like um, what you have is you have a few tabs here. You have code, which actually shows you um, the game code of, of Melee. And so what I'm looking through here is actually, it's, it's essentially Melee's machine code. This is what tells Melee how to work. And so if I hit pause here, um, you see the screen marker. This is actually the line of code that is being executed right now. And what I can do is I can step through this code um, and go through line by line and see exactly what's going on with this code. Well, I mean, it doesn't really make much sense right now, and honestly, I can't just look at this and figure out what's going on, but you're able to analyze this and uh, essentially figure out what certain things do. Uh, the next tab is Registers, and what this shows you is, well, let me move the game window over a little bit, but um, this shows you uh, all of the registers in the PowerPC processor. Um, Dolphin and the Wii and GameCube run on PowerPC. Different processors have different numbers of registers and they all work kind of differently, but this is the way this one works. Essentially, each register is like a little slot of memory that this system can use to temporarily store like a value or a variable. Like you can see here in register 3, the value 2 is currently stored. Um, and as I step through the code, different things happen to the registers. Like here it's manipulating R3 and doing stuff with it. Um, and so this is very useful to see because, you know, you can look at all the, the temporary variables. Um, I mean, we'll be looking at it later, but you can essentially see everything that the processor is doing right now, um, and you can manipulate it and, like, really understand what's going on in the code. Um, the third tab is the breakpoints tab, which allows you to set breakpoints. Uh, we'll be doing that later, so I'll get into that. Um, and then the fourth tab is memory. And with this, you can actually look at the game's memory. Um, the memory is basically everything that the game knows and is doing and has stored currently. When it loads any game files from the disk, it, it puts them in the memory. If it needs to store any temporary values, then it throws them in memory. Um, pretty much everything is in the game memory, everything you can imagine. You know, my cursor's vision on the screen is in memory right now. All the animations and objects are stored in memory. When I start a game, um, all the character properties, their stock, their percent, their velocities, uh, their action states, everything is stored in memory. And so it's really cool to just have access to this and be able to change literally whatever you want. As long as you can find where something is stored, um, which, again, we'll be doing that. As long as you can find where something is stored, you're able to modify it and just mess with the game. It's really, really cool. So that's that's most of the uh, debug features that I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Uh, there's, there's a couple more things, uh, but we'll be, you know, going over that stuff later.